Coming to live from uh, uh, Nairobi, Kenya, this is Friday to Topics this evening. Tonight, Interior CS says government will not spare any force in hunting down bandits terrorizing residents along the Kirio Valley. Wale ambao wamechukua ngombe, pale Baragoi, na pale ya Laisamis. Tunajua mahali umpo na tunakuja kuchukua hiyo ngombe. In a move that could place the government in crosshairs with the human rights bodies. Sirisia MP John Waluke freed on bail after 41 days behind bars. Kari ya jubili ilinifunga makusudi na kuna mambo mengi nitakuja kuita media na kusema eh, wazi kinakanaka. Elated residents. Tupea hii siku na mweshimi wa atoke inje akuja afenye kazi na selekani ya nyeiko. And a mother's joy. Nimefurai. Kwa maakama kutoa mkuku kuwacha mtota yangu, nime, nita muona, eh? And in our special report, we tell you of tales of Tana River women who still track for kilometers on end just to seek maternal health care. Gariza, hapa kuna gari ya hospitali, heko mgini heko pesa, hakuna pesa. Wakati na hita parofo, usakimbia pesa, natafuta. Mama na fikiri na asa yumbani, damu yote natoka. Good evening, welcome to the broadcast. Catherine Simolo is on the Sun Language Docket. My name is Stanley. Here we get on to our first story of the bulletin. Serious member of parliament, John Waluke has been freed on a 10 million Ken shillings bail after 41 days and 40 nights behind bars. Waluke was serving his 67-year sentence for corruption conviction. Elizabeth Mutuku with a story which also includes elated residents and a mother's joy. Tonight, Sirisia MP John Waluke is spending his first night as a free man after the Court of Appeal cleared his appeal for hearing. In the decision, the court agreed with Waluke's lawyers who argued that he risked losing his seat after missing eight sittings and thereby disenfranchised the residents of Sirisia constituency. As a result, Waluke was released on a 10 million shillings bail awaiting his appeal hearing. Waluke was sentenced 67 years in jail after he was found guilty of defrauding the National Series and Produce Board NCPB 313 million shillings. The legislator was charged alongside Grace Wahungu and Erad Supplies and General Contracts Limited, a company where the duo are shareholders. Waluke and Wahungu, through the company, were supposed to supply 40,000 metric tons of maize to NCPB in the year 2004, but ended up pocketing 313 million shillings without supplying even a single grain of maize. I was going to talk about the government. I was going to talk about the government. Kuna mambo mengi, nitakuja kuita media na kusema e, wazi kinakanaka e, kwa vile nilifungwa kimakusuti. However, leaders of Western Region, led by former Defence Cabinet Secretary Eugene Wamalwa, want the office of DPP to drop the charges as it has been to the Kenya Kwanza Brigade. Toka, tunashukuru. Pili, vile kesi zingine zimeisha. Nyinyi mumeona kesi ya Deputy President Rigathi Gashagwa. 7 billion wame imeisha. Nyinyi mumeona kesi ya kina Waititu. 558 million imekuisha. Nyinyi mumeona hui mama alipiga ali mutu risasi. Aisha. Aisha Juma. Kesi yake wanatoa. Kama hiyo ndio trend, mbona mutoto yetu waumia. Kutaka kuambia hile mbinu wanatumia, waendelea kutumia hiyo mbinu. Sisi tunataka hii vitu ya waluke iishe mara moja. Father Waluke's mom, who was full of joy after his son was released, has urged the government to pardon him with Sirisia residents taking to the streets to celebrate his freedom. Hata mi hiko na furaha. Na furaha yangu, 
nimefurahi kwa mahakama kutoa ku, ku, kuacha mtoto yangu nime nitamuona eh mmefurahi kwa waruke mmefurahi kwa joni sana anamsaidia atamsaidia tena tupea hii siku na mheshimiwa atoke nje akuje afanye kazi na na serikali yenye iko kwa saa hizi sisi tunajua kwamba sirisha watu wa sirisha walikuwa mwanzo wa UDA yes. au ndio waliandikisha UDA na wakaleta UDA ikasambaa eneo yetu ya Bungoma kila mahali mheshimiwa alitembeza UDA saa hizi tunaomba mheshimiwa akikuja kama wakaaji wa sirisha tunataka mheshimiwa arudi kwa chama yetu ya UDA yeah. watu wamekuwa kama yatima sirisha lakini saa hizi tuko na furaha kubwa tunataka kurudishie Mungu shukurani kwa yale yamefanya sisi hatutaki kuongea mambo mingi kwa sababu tulikuwa tunamngoja mheshimiwa atoke nje na mmeomba mmeomba lakini tunashukuru Mungu amejibu maombi yetu yeah. Elizabeth Mutiko, TV47, Nairobi. And at matters of security, Interior CS Professor Kithure Kindiki has put cattle rustlers and bandits terrorizing residents on notice stating that the government will use all available weaponry within its disposal to flash banditry menace in Kenya. Speaking while launching a training program for 360 National Police Reservists in Samburu County, the CS says that the bandits have dared the president and therefore should wait for the government's wrath. On his part, Saburu Governor Lati Lelit asked Indira CS to hasten a follow on the 900 cattle stolen three days ago in Samburu North by heavily armed bandits. Chukua ngombe, pale baragoi, na pale ya laisamis. Tunajua mahali umpo, na tunakuja kuchukua hiyo ngombe. Tutatumia nguvu yote ya kiserikali. Tutatumia silaha yote ya serikali mpaka tuhakikishe au ngombe wamerudi. And from that, President William Ruto has claimed that corruption was the greatest impediment to the growth of industrialization over the last five years. Speaking in Kwale County, the president alleged economic sabotage on a few individuals whom he referred to as con men and brokers. This is the president's first tour of the coast region since he was elected. President Ruto, during his maiden visit to the coastal region, has underlined Kenya Kwanza commitments to facilitate and support industries by ensuring favorable government regulations. Tutaweka sera ambayo itaakikisha ya kwamba uwegezaji wao inawapatia mali, ndio itupatie na fasi ya ajira na itusaidie kupunguza ile pesa za gigeni tunatumia. Speaking as he graced the opening of a new DevKey factory in Kinango, Kwale County, Ruto has loaded the aspirations, citing that Kenyans will benefit through creation of employment and new infrastructure developments. Similani. President Ruto noted that industries have depressed their contribution towards the nation's GDP from 9% to 7%, which he says something should be done to revert this. Kazi yote itaelekea, mipango yote tutaelekeza vile itamfaidi mwananchi wa kawaida. Either apate ajira ama apate nafasi ya kujumuika katika kuzalisha mali katika taifa letu la Kenya. His objective being a 20% contribution by year 2013. The government is also set to make a policy framework that will help industries buy available raw materials in the country, an issue that was seconded by the Cabinet Secretary for Trade, Investment and Industry, Moses Korea. Watu wachache wanafanya urafiki na wafanyikazi wa serikali, wanapindua sera ili kusaidia mabroka na wale wengine middlemen na wale wengine ambao wanafanya biashara hapo katikati kuangaisha viwanda zetu. Ni kwa sababu gani? Kwa sababu tukielea kuleta bidhaa kutoka nje. Kuna vijana hapa Samburu watapata kazi huko America kweli? Kuna vijana hapa Samburu watapata kazi huko China? Ndio tulete kazi hapa hapa hapa. Lazima tufanye ile inapaswa kufanya kama serikali. 
Tomorrow, President Ruto is expected to tour Kilifi County, where he will attend a burial ceremony of Kilifi North Member of Parliament Oyen Bayer's father. His maiden visit at the coastal region since his inauguration has brought new hopes to the Kwale residents that the Kenya Kwanza government is committed and focused to relook into their needs. Paul Monio TV 47, Kwale County. Thank you, Moni, for that. And now to some matters. Business, Cooperatives Cabinet Secretary Simon Chelegui has dismissed claims that Hustler Fund defaulters will be fined heavily. Chelegui said the penalty of a fine and imprisonment only targets officials hell-bent on defrauding the fund. The minister says 5% of the loan borrowed will go to savings scheme where the government will be adding one shilling for the one shilling saved to boost national savings and borrowers. Jaligui added that it will be easy for Kenyans to access it since it will not require a lot of paperwork as it will be operated through mobile networks and the specific code to be used instead of links to discourage fraud number. This will, be, this will give them many ch changes, uh, chances rather of occurring the loan. The other revolutionary aspect of the fund is the saving component. Everyone borrows Every time one borrows, 5% of the amount goes to a saving scheme where the money earns interest. In addition, for every shilling two, two saved, the government adds one shilling. This will, of course, boost national savings and also provide those who borrow from Hustlers Fund some cushion for a rainy day. And like many financial products that require a lot of paperwork, grantors or collateral among other hurdles borrowers will face no such roadblocks the finance will be ass assessed on, a, on our mobile network or our mobile numbers the fund is working with the leading mobile network operators safaricom airtel and telcom to deliver the funds they are also setting up a joint call center that will disseminate information and respond to issues and questions of borrowers. We wish to inform the public to disregard all forms of communication inviting them to register for the fund on website or phone numbers. No registration is required and, and all that will be required is to dial a code. And now to some Ugali matters, a day after Cabinet Secretary of Trade, Moses Kuria, sentiments on importation of GMO maize into the country. Mixed reactions have arose among civil society organizations addressing their concerns on GMOs, terming it unhealthy to Kenyans. Lucky Hereno with more. The government of Kenya, we cannot hide our heads in the sand anymore. We have taken two deliberate steps. One is that we have so many things that can kill us in this country. Being in this country, you are a candidate for death. <laughs> and because there's so many things competing for death, there's nothing wrong with adding GMO to that list. <laughs> that is why we have deliberately decided to allow GMOs into this country. These are the sentiments that have brought mixed reaction among Kenyans a civil society call out the CS for the remarks they deem as insensitive. I would like to remind him that Kenyans' lives matter and therefore they must be protected at all costs. I'd like to remind the Honorable Minister that all sovereign power belongs to the people of Kenya and Kenyans have put them there to protect, to protect us and make sure that even as we trade our lives are protected at all costs. According to rights group, Korean sentiments are a confirmation that the government is deliberately putting Kenyans at a harm's way. And uh, yesterday when in his speech at the University of Nairobi, he spoke about uh, the importance of technology and GMOs to feed Kenyans. Yet Kenyans have uh, a right to choose whether they want to feed on GMO or not. Besides health risks, they claim that the move to import GMA food goes against the government move to uplift farmers. This is not the first time the once Gatundu lawmaker finds himself in remarks that sent tanks wagging. 
Just recently, he was quoted as okaying the eviction of Earth River residents, whom he claimed had grabbed land for the East African Portland Cement Company. Ali last year, Kurio was also in hot soup for claiming that he helped outgoing President Uhuru Kenyatta to rig the 2017 elections. For the longest time, Kuria has been a fierce critic of ODM chief Raila Odinga and at the same point was put behind bars. Lakiriano reporting for TV47. And from that, the mother to missing security consultant Mwende Mbujiwe now claims her life is in danger. She says that they have been receiving frequent strange visitors at their home, the latest being Sunday night, where a known person who claimed to be looking for a job. According to Jen Gatwiri, the gentleman did not introduce himself, besides looking confused and remained still for some minutes, and then borrowed 50 shillings as transport money, which Jen told him she didn't have. The statement states the man stayed there for a few minutes and then left the compound. Hassan Gioni took it to seven that Missy Jui or Mutu Alingiri Awapi, Nikaskia, Charenda Kinyambi, Komutu Anaitana. So mimi nikafungua murango kwa sababu zingefikiria mambo mabaya nikakuta a gentleman who was looking like a police officer nikamuliza ni nini akaniambia ninatafuta kazi nikamwambia mimi sina kazi na hakuna kazi natafuta ngo usiku I started receiving free airtime maybe 150 100 unknown calls frequently uh, and I saw that one as a cycle. At the gate, a motorbike that seemed to have been on standby waiting for the man was driven off. Alafu sasa, ya kaondoka na kafungua murangu akatoka. Imenje tele tulitoka na chialende, tukasikia motorbike miondoka. As much uh, we're into prayers and uh, community support and uh, even our own private security. Um, somebody should just put on our shoes. She later reported the matter to Timao police station and CID officers visited her home for investigations. I'm appealing to our government, a very able government, to give to account me security because I see my life and that of my family is in danger. It is the Sunday night incident that has left the family in fear of their life, according to Mbijiwe's mother and brother. Things started getting worse security-wise a month ago after they met the new DCI boss Amin Mohamed Ibrahim. They have called on the government to provide them with more security at home. Buri West Police Commander Joseph Obara, who spoke off camera, advised the family to look for a home guard who will be on the lookout at all times. As the matter is under investigation, Obara has added that so far, no one has been linked or arrested in relation to the incident. Bijiwe went off the radar on 12th June 2021, with the family insisting that they are aware he is alive. And to a special piece tonight, the availability of skilled care at birth remains a major problem in most developing countries, with Kenya being one of them. Although the community midwifery model is a culturally acceptable method, the use of skilled birth attendants, however, remains disproportionately lower among poor mothers. Our reporter Flora Limuki traveled to Tana River and Cliffy County and now brings us a, this comprehensive story of the challenges women face as they seek health care services. It's a sizable part of the country, basking in the glory of growth and civilization. Many more Kenyans remain chained in the shackles of underdevelopment, with women bearing the greatest brunt. Such is the case in some parts of the northern part of the coastal region, where close to six decades after independence, some women still travel up to 20 kilometers to seek critical maternal health services. <laughs> Eko mgini eko pesa, hakuna pesa. Wakati naita parofo, usinakimbia pesa, natafuta. Mama nafikiri na asayi mbani, damu yote natoka. We embark on a 500-kilometer journey from Nairobi to Tana River County. This rough road, located in this dry, bare and barren land of Bora constituency, leads us to Dukakotu village. 
For a very long time, women in Tana River County have been using the traditional bath attendant to deliver their babies. However, this has since changed since most of them now prefer the use of health facilities to deliver their babies. And in a quest to find more about the transition, we traverse different constituencies in Tana River County and this is what we found out. As we approach the village, we come across a group of young women on their Islamic attires who welcome us to their small and traditional manyatas. We first visit the home of Shukriya Abdullahi, now a mother of three. Shukriya informs us that she lost her firstborn child the day she made what she now describes as the worst decision in her life, and that was giving birth at home. In the vast Tana River County, traditional bath attendant TBAs remain the main providers of delivery services in rural and remote areas. This due to, among other things, the fact that Tana River County still reels from inter-ethnic clashes in 1996, 2001 and 2012, which, besides leaving hundreds of dead in their wake, led to the destruction of critical infrastructure among them hospitals. Kujua kama huyu anataka kujifungua. Ila ni maji, tambulisho, ya pili ni damu, ya tatu kuna kamba kamba zinatoka, hiyo ndiyo tunatambulisha kama huyu ndi wakuza. Damacharo Kitsao is a midwife who has delivered so many babies in this village, but the increase in maternal and newborn mortality arising from unsafe deliveries has forced her to act as a link between the expectant women and the health facilities. <laughs> Hasa wanda kupingibili ya sipitali. Ukikimbili ya kule sipitali, pani pali alipone umana uchungu likuwa humuleti wewe. Hasa wewe ushako wa na mashaka na yeye na mashaka. Ndo sasa afadhali kule. Nadiwa Gotiko now narrates to us the sleepless nights she is forced to endure as she traverses different villages which are mostly two kilometers apart to help women deliver. Hata village tu nimeka. Nimeanza huko. Kujahapa. The vast population rooted in deep cultural beliefs where men have the say in most households. Women say they are deprived of their right to access emergency medical care at health facilities. Wakati tunaenda kwa maboma, maybe utakuta hiyo mzee ya hiyo boma hayuko. Na hiyo mama anamogopa mzee, bila hiyo mzee ataki kuenda. Na hiyo uki changamoto jenye tunapata sana ni uku watu hawajaenda shule sana so wana wanafikiria mimi tundo na kulia juu yake dr samuel guyo of bura sub county hospital now tells us that with increased community awareness women in the county are slowly but surely embracing deliveries at health facilities most so we are involving the tbs in referrals and the chvs in also referral of these uh, mothers to come and deliver in our hospital so it's something that is working and uh, we can see from our statistics, we have moved from the low numbers to, to high numbers. For the last few months, the Red Cross Society of Kenya has partnered with the community and health practitioners to create an outreach campaign in a bid to create more awareness in the area. We find the child uh, is susceptible to stunting and malnutrition. And also, we also need the mother to recover from childbirth so that they can have healthy babies afterwards. So that is why we 
contribute to sensitizing the community or health promotion on safe delivery and family planning. Even with the significant steps made towards promoting more skilled births, a lot is yet to be done in the county in efforts to achieve a 100% transition. Flora Limoki, TV47, Tana River County. Very much appreciated for that, Flora Limoki. Now, from the whole long walk to delivery to a whole long walk to a theoretical family planning. So how much do you know about vasectomy? Is it something you would consider for yourself? Or if you're a woman, will you suggest it, this to your husband? Today, 18th of November 2022, is World Vasectomy Day, and experts converge to create awareness about the procedure. However, this is an untouched topic in Kenya and Africa in general, as men shy away Away from discussing family planning topics, mostly leaving the conversation to women. Sylvia Nyongasa had a conversation with women who have undergone vasectomy and brings us the following story of men taking control of the growth of their families. Vasectomy. Although this conversation crops up often, it is still a topic that most Kenyan men are out of touch with. This, this is the vast difference. Eh? Since the introduction of family planning in Kenya, the concept has been associated with women, despite the fact that there are contraception options that are meant for men. The two available and effective options for men are male condoms and vasectomy. A majority of Kenyan men have embraced the use of condoms due to ease of availability and its ability to prevent sexually transmitted diseases. However, a very negligible number have considered vasectomy. Anthony Newtu, an entrepreneur, says he decided to go through the procedure so as to protect his wife from the negative effects of female contraceptive options available in the market. I thought... Uh, this lady has been so good to me, what gift can I give her? And one of the things I thought is to get her out of those kind of medications because I know that they really um, play with your hormones as ladies, right? Second one was I'd gotten enough of the kids that I needed. So four of them and taking all of them in this group of schools it was damaging the bank account. Fear of society's opinions and ignorance are the main reasons given by men for not embracing vasectomy, although in recent times the number of men willing to engage in the conversation, if not undertake the procedure, has been growing steadily. Stephen Kiruri, a businessman who also had a vasectomy 10 years ago, recounts how taking the step has helped him get ahead in life. It has improved very much. My youngest child is 17 years. I am sure that I will never get any other children, so I can be able to plan for these kids. When asked about the downside of the method, the two men dismiss any disadvantages, adding that vasectomy is done under local anesthesia and is painless, and the longest a man can feel discomfort after the procedure is a week. The perception that has been created, it's like you're going to the way we do castration to animals. You look like they are going there, there's a badizo waiting for you just to clip off. <laughs> And you're thinking after that, you're not going to ever perform again, right? And those are the fears. Ten being the most painful, I, I, I'd give it two. There's no pain. It is a, actually, it is just a plick. Vasectomy is a surgical procedure where a vasectomist disconnects or blocks the vas deferens, a tube transporting the sperms to prevent them from leaving a man's body, therefore ensuring that semen produced does not have the ability to fertilize a woman's egg. There are two types of vasectomies, the incision method and the no scalpel, no cut method. Dr. Charles Ocheng, a vasectomist, says the no scalpel method is the most common type of vasectomy done in Kenya, adding that the procedure is painless and takes less than 30 minutes. The way we manage pain is two pronged. One, we give them paracetamol before the procedure. And during the procedure in theater, we just do it under local anesthesia. So we just infiltrate the lignocaine cane around the vast difference to numb it. So then you just talk. As you do it, we just discuss. We discuss politics. And then before you know it, shh, done. Before the procedure is done, the vasectomist interacts with the patient to understand their medical history and the reasons why they want to undertake the procedure. Counseling will then be offered to ensure the man is sure of his decision. No, it's permanent. It's permanent.
government. Yeah, it's um, it's done for either guys who have had enough babies or guys who are not interested. After the procedure, men are advised not to do any tedious work or engage in sexual activities for 48 hours. Recently, a notable number of men have come up to embrace the method with the rise of a group dubbed control takers that offer information, guidance and mentorship to other men who are curious about the procedure and those interested in having it done. We need to understand what actually it is, right? Uh, re re remove that stigma and, and, and mindset that this is something that makes you not a man, okay? But in terms of performance, it's the same. Yeah? You know, when you undergo vasectomy, it's sperms that you don't have. The semen is the same. The semen does not contain the, 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 the sperm. Experts in Kenya are now calling on the government to integrate vasectomy into medical training to increase the number of doctors performing vasectomies in the country to meet the needs of the growing number of men embracing the method. Sylvia Nyongesa. TV 47. Right, well, uh, that is one particular sticky issue that men, I'm pretty sure, African gentlemen will not be willing to discuss. On that note, we take a short break. You're watching Friday. Stay with us. stories. There is a lot that happens around the world we cannot control. But when we know where the affected are, we can stretch our hands to help. Let's join TV47 and the youth in this noble cause to stand with fellow Kenyans in times of need. TV47 for Kenya. Pamoja for Kenya. Send your monetary donations to pay bill number 409-8795. Account name. Pamoja for Kenya or drop solid contributions to TV47 Ojija Road, Gate 10 and all the MKU branches in the country. No act of kindness goes to waste. Usiakubalia maumivu ya misuli kukatiza ratiba yako. Kaluma Pain Balm ni dawa ya kusugua iliyotengenezwa kutoka kwa miche maalum ili kutuliza maumivu ya misuli. Kaluma Pain Balm. Maumivu ya kizidi, pata ushauri wa daktari. What's happening around you? Morning Cafe with heated political debates. Baraza la Siasa. Informative health discussions. Business. Farming. Tasty Wednesday. Fitness Thursday. And Feel Good Friday. With amazing DJs. Celebs. <laughs> <laughs> and music bands every Monday to Friday from 6 a.m. to 9 a.m. How well do you know what's happening around you? Morning Cafe with heated political debates. Baraza la Siasa. Informative health discussions. Business. Farming. Tasty Wednesday. Fitness Thursday. Salvation. And as Elizabeth Atieno reports, the Kenya High School today contributed food and stationaries to Langata Primary School pupils as a way of boosting their education amid uh, the drought situation. 
The severe and worsening drought in Kenya has impacted school retention as pupils are forced to drop out of school to support their parents in search of food, pasture and water. As you all know, we, are, oh, we have been having very serious famine in our country. Our people are dying. Lack of food has had a negative impact on the lives of the community, and this has trickled down to learners, especially in primary schools. Learners now attend class with the hope that they will get food in school, as they do not have any at home. Today, pupils from Langata Primary School were able to get a first-hand experience after the Kenya High School Fraternity paid them a courtesy visit with a bag full of goodies. Every student in Kenya High contributed to this food that we see here to give another school. Imagine a school giving another school food. Whatever we can each do as Kenyans in our homes, what you can do as an individual, that 200 shillings, 300 shillings you can give for food to someone else who doesn't have then that is the same spirit we need to have that Kenya High School has shown us today. We give them pocket money as parents, but they saw it fit to remove that pocket money and share with you people, and they did not ask for permission from us parents. Our success, our progress. With only days left to the national exams, these learners from Langata Primary School will not only require to fill their empty stomachs but also quench their thirst for knowledge. These stationaries also donated to the school will now help grade 6 and class 8 pupils in their revision. So now that we've done that, Tunatukapu distribute chakula, kila mtuende nyungani na kitu, and then after that, tukai chini, tukunwe soda na imate, the happy Langata Primary School pupils were able to share a bottle of soda and a slice of bread with the president's daughter, Charlene Ruto, who graced the event. Currently, 5.1 million Kenyans in 23 of the 47 counties are facing drought, which continues to worsen in 20 of the 23 arid and semi-arid counties. Elizabeth Atieno, TV47, Nairobi. Now to the wonderful world of sports and something that we have all been waiting for. The 2022-2023 FKF Premier League uh, is scheduled to kick off from tomorrow as seven matches are scheduled to be played in a different stadium in the country. Kakamega Homeboys will be welcomed. Will welcome defending champions Tasca FC the Bukungu Stadium. FC Leopards will visit Ulinzi at the Ulinzi Complex and 19 times champions Gordmahe will welcome Zoya at the Nyayo Stadium. And on Sunday, Sofa Park will travel to Coast Region to face Bandari as KCB will square off with, um, with basically Madara United will face Poster Rangers and Wazito will face Vihiga where postponed following uh, as following are uh, ordered by the sports tribunal regarding the FKF National Executive Committee on promotion and relegation decision on the 2021-2022 season. And elsewhere, Kenya tennis sensation Angelo Kutoi earlier today defeated Slovakian Emma Tothova to set to nail in the W15 Nairobi ITF Championship of the current country club. And